our, uh, our elected officials stand behind the podium and they say, uh, we need more unity. We need to come together. As if you could speak unity into being by just uttering the words. It doesn't work that way. I spent a great deal of time starting at the age of seven in environments that were all about unity, setting aside your differences to work together. It was called Pop Warner Football. <laughs> and I played football throughout college, and then when I was done playing, I uh, became a strength and conditioning coach on a collegiate level. Any Aztecs here? So I started coaching at San Diego State and moved on to Kansas State. And I was a... There's a lot of guys here? Okay. Any Boston College Eagles here? Really? Okay. So I moved from San Diego State to Kansas State to Boston College. several programs throughout the years, but this particular program that we created is called Game Changer, and we believe it to be just that. So the way it works is three hours before the start of a professional or, or collegiate sporting event, we get members of law enforcement, judges, elected officials, and lay members of the community like you and I, and they could be juveniles, young adults in college. And we come together for a moderated focus group. And we talk for two and a half hours about problems, solutions, people who have things that they need to get off their chest. And so does law enforcement. They have a lot to say. Dinner is served. And when we're done with our moderated focus group, Everyone that's at the table, it's about 20 people, 15 members of the community like you and I, and five or six members of law enforcement. Everyone has an opportunity to go around the room and share what they learned that they didn't know before they walked in the room. And then we all go to the game together and spend some human quality bonding time. If you can imagine, sometimes the conversations get tense, so sometimes there's this fence mending that takes place at the game. But there's bridge building at the game, and, and show of hands, who's ever been to a, a sporting event? <laughs> okay, do you enjoy yourself at the game? Yeah. Okay, and you're talking about whatever, especially at a baseball game, there's plenty of time to talk about this. <laughs> so, that's the gist of the program, but there's a woman in the audience here who, she's a wise woman, she's not that tall, but she's very bright. <laughs> she told me a long time ago to never tell a story without numbers and never have numbers without a story. So we actually collect data during the focus groups. And the data consists of everyone in the room filling out a pre perception survey. So we have a pre perception survey that measures the thoughts about various aspects of law enforcement and community. And then while we're at the game, we have smart tablets and they fill out a post-perception survey. And we do that because this is a behavioral psychology model. And we believe that a change in thought can lead to a change in behavior. A change in behavior that we're looking for in this case is more peaceful outcomes. I'm not going to dig too deep into the data, but I will share this with you. 
the top two reasons why there is unrest between law enforcement and community. Law enforcement and community agree upon the top reason, poor communication. Either what's being said, how it's being said, or nothing's being said at all. They disagree on the second reason. The community attributes lack of trust, and law enforcement thinks the number two problem is compliance. Well, if I don't trust you, how can I blindly comply with you? People often ask me, what are the <coughs> focus groups like? What, what's the event like? Well, it's, it's about exposure, and with exposure comes education. So if you can imagine, people who have never had an opportunity to sit down with a trained, <coughs> clothed member of law enforcement <coughs> and talk it out. And law enforcement rarely, if ever, has the opportunity to do the same. When we get involved in law enforcement, it's not a good day. <laughs> they're pulling us over, they're giving us a ticket. We don't talk about the chargers leaving San... Did I say that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so you have that type of education going on due to exposure, but there's also the exposure that takes place from community member to community member. So in light of Charlottesville, Virginia, we have people from all points of San Diego County, rich, poor, black, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, young, old, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, all hearing from one another and speaking with one another and learning from one another. It's the type of education that you cannot get in a classroom. People ask me, who are your partners? How are you getting this done? Well, we're currently working with 13 members. 13 agencies representing law enforcement, community colleges, four-year colleges like San Diego State and USD, community organizations, nonprofits, student organizations. So we have everyone coming to the table to partner, and most importantly, businesses, because we couldn't do this without the San Diego Padres, uh, SDG and E. And it's not just the philanthropic dollars that they're providing and the space that they're donating for us to have our focus groups, or the game tickets. It's about their input, too. So we have CEOs joining the focus groups that they've never seen anything like it. And getting their input is extremely valuable to us because the business community is part of the community. So we literally have everyone in the room and going to the game together and spending time with one another. I'm often asked, what has been the biggest surprise? Well, when you create something from scratch, you really don't know how it's going to go. So for us to have 13 law enforcement agencies working with us, that was a, that's been a surprise because we started out with just the police department, and that turned into the probation department, and that turned into federal border patrol. So there's local, state, and federal law enforcement working with us. But I want to say this, the thing that surprised me most is the mental health issues that I've learned about when it comes to, to law enforcement. Oftentimes when we, we turn on the television, we may see a tragic incident with law enforcement dealing with a mental health call, very difficult call, and sometimes they do end tragically, but learning about the mental health issues that law enforcement deal with on a daily basis. To see a Border Patrol agent break down sobbing in a focus group because of what he's seen over the years, day after day, and learning that law enforcement's number one cause of death is suicide, that has surprised me. So I want to take an opportunity to invite everyone to become a game changer. Dinner's on me, and the tickets are on me. Thank you.